Hello everyone and welcome back to Quest for Nectar. Today we're doing something a little bit different because as you can see we're inside uh, and today we're going to be talking about nature writing. So I'm starting a new series on my channel called Wild Reads and in it I'm going to be talking to you about all the nature books, field guides and nature writing that I like to read that I have read over the last few months and years and the ones that I would like to read. So in this first video we're going to be talking about the ones that I'm most excited to get to in 2020. So first up we have Wilding by Isabella Tree, fantastic name for a nature writer. This one I'm sure you've seen because it's been in bookshops all around the country, it's won several awards and it's been shortlisted for several others. It's really really popular and really famous and I actually asked for it for Christmas because I just hadn't got around to reading it for the last couple of years. Now this, in case you don't know, deals with Isabella and her husband and they own a farm called Nep, which I think is in Sussex somewhere? Um, and over the last few years they'd started to notice that their farm was just being really intensively, intensively farmed and they weren't really getting anything from it. So the yields they were getting weren't great and it was really damaging the wildlife that was on their farm, that was living on their land. So they did something really quite drastic and they decided to rewild their farm. Now this project, this rewilding project, is really famous in the UK as a success story. So in the last couple of years they've had fantastic results, they've had really good response from all kinds of in, you know, creatures. Um, I believe they've got like turtle doves like this one on the cover, they've had purple emperor butterflies, um, falcons, all different sorts of species have really come back to the land that they've been farming on. So a really, really uplifting success story and I'm really looking forward to reading it as everyone seems to love it, so I hope I will too. Next up, we have Eight Master Lessons of Nature by Gary Ferguson. This is a more recent publication. I spotted this one in bookshops just before Christmas, and I really, really wanted to get around to reading it. I actually asked for it for Christmas as well. Um, this one is about what we can learn from nature. So I think we'll all agree that in our modern society, we're quite detached from nature as a society. We don't really interact with it that much, and we don't look to it as an example for how to live well. Um, but that is what, exactly what Gary Ferguson wants us to do. So in his book, he talks about how we can learn from nature, we can learn to live well, we can learn to live better lives and be happier and healthier. Um, there's articles or chapters in here, I think, about waste and how in nature not much is wasted. You know, it's all recycled and, and returned back to the earth and back into the cycles of, of life. Um, there's chapters in here about... Um, how we can live as a society. So I think there's one about men and women and how they work together in nature versus how we work together as humans. There's a lot of interesting stuff in here and it's quite a slim book. It's not too fat, but I think there's going to be a lot of good ideas uh, and I'm really excited to get around to reading it. So that's number two. Then we have The Living Mountain by Nan Shepherd. So before Christmas, I was typing into Google best examples of nature writing, and this one is at the top of the list of nearly every single list. Um, this was written by a woman called Nan Shepherd in Scotland, and it's about her travels and adventures in the Cairngorms, or the Scottish mountains. It was written quite a while ago, it was written during the Second World War, um, and then it was just put away into a drawer. The manuscript was just lost uh, to time, but it was rediscovered and published later on. Um, and everybody seems to love this. It's on, as I say, it's on all the lists of the best nature writing out there. It's a tiny little book. It's really small, so it's not going to take me long to read, but I'm really excited for this one. I think it's going to be really beautiful, really poetic, and really evocative of the place. Um, so yeah, really looking forward to that one. Then we have The Salt Path by Raina Wins. This is another one that's been really popular over the last few months and years. Um, and it deals with Raina and her husband, who unfortunately is diagnosed with a terminal illness. And the way that this couple decide to deal with that is that they decide to go on a long walk. So they're going to walk the Southwest Coast Path, which is a path that goes all along the coastline of the southwest of England, um, from Dorset to Somerset and around Cornwall as well. It's a really beautiful part of the world. Um, I think a lot of people go there, you know, on holiday, they go there for the scenery and the different animals that they can see. Um, but this couple go there to try and sort of coach themselves through or deal with their grief uh, and struggles at this really bad news that they've just received. Um, I do believe that they are either camping or they're homeless while, while they're walking. Um, 
So it's not going to be the happiest book, I don't think, but I have heard that it is a particularly uplifting book. Um, so it's really inspirational how this couple use the natural world to kind of help them through um, their troubles. Um, they use this walk um, to get closer together as a couple, to build on their relationship and just to think and use that time to get closer and sort of work through their problems. So I think this is another one that's going to be particularly beautiful to read. Quite harsh landscape at times, but also really stonkingly beautiful as well. So lots of potential for really great nature writing in here. And as I say, everyone does seem to like this one. So I think I will too. Next, we've got The Pebbles on the Beach, A Spotter's Guide by Clarence Ellis. So this is a similar kind of theme. It's talking about beaches, but it's a really, really different book. So this was written in the 1950s, and I think I'm really going to like this one. I love nature writing. It's kind of that British sort of eccentric nature guides, naturalists. Uh, yeah, I think this is one that's really going to be exciting for me. Um, it's all about pebbles, which on the face of it doesn't seem like such an exciting topic, but I'm sure it will be. If you look at the front, you can see this gorgeous cover here. The end papers are actually, if I can open it out for you, here we go. The end papers are sort of a field guide to the pebbles that you can find on the beach. So wonderfully illustrated. And the book takes you through how pebbles are formed, where they've come from, because obviously when you're on a beach and you're looking along and you see all the different stones and the pebbles, they haven't just turned up there, they've come from all around the world. So the sea is obviously transient and it carries different rocks and different minerals from all around the world, all different continents to Britain. So that in itself is super exciting, I think. Um, and yeah, I can just see myself sitting down. It's getting slightly warmer, but it's still pretty chilly here at the end of January, at the beginning of February in the UK. So yeah, sitting down, reading this and dreaming of walks on the beach. And I think it's going to be really useful actually later on in the summer when I do get to the beach, because it's just going to bring to life everything that I find, all the little pebbles. I'm going to be rushing back to this book to see where they came from, what they're made from and what their name is. So yeah, super excited for this one. Second to last, we've got H is for Hawk by Helen MacDonald. Now, I have been putting this one off a little bit. It's been on my shelf for quite a long time. Um, and the reason for that is that I think it's just going to be really sad. Um, and there's nothing wrong with sad books. I do quite enjoy a sad book from time to time, but I don't know what it is about this. Um, so it's, it's a memoir. Let's get that straight. It's a memoir. Um, Helen is a woman who, when she was younger, was really into falconry. So she dreamed of being a falconer and training birds of prey. And then unfortunately, when she grows up and gets older, her dad passes away. And dealing with that grief, she becomes a falconer. So she goes and she buys a goshawk and she begins to train her. Um, and it's just the story of how she uses um, her relationship with the bird and learning to become a falconer to kind of come to terms with and sort of get over, I believe, um, the death of her dad. And it just strikes me as a really, really sad topic um, and just one that I've been struggling to get, get to. I think I'm a little bit hesitant. So if you have read Ages for Hawk uh, and you enjoyed it, please do let me know below because I do need a little bit of encouragement with this one. I'm sure it's fantastic. It's won lots of awards. Um, it's been shortlisted for many, many more. But yeah, I do just need a little bit of push, a little bit of encouragement to get started on this one. And then lastly, and most excitingly, we have The Moth Snowstorm by Michael McCarthy. And this one, I think, does win the prize for the most beautiful cover, because just look at that. Gorgeous florals, and then all those wonderful moths and butterflies. Um, so this one was actually recommended to me by Epiphany, which is, I think, how you pronounce her, her Instagram name. Because um, we were talking about Gerald Durrell, and she recommended this to me because it's kind of in a similar vein. So this book is written by Michael McCarthy, and he talks in it about, he believes that the main argument for protecting nature and caring for nature is the fact that it brings us as humans a lot of joy. So the excitement, the awe, the wonder, the joy that nature brings us, he believes is reason enough to protect it and set out to care for it. Um, and to be honest, I'm inclined to agree. I haven't even read this book yet, but I'm inclined to agree with him. Um, and it's a bit of a memoir. It's a mix between, um, I believe, flashbacks to when he was younger and his first experiences with nature and learning to appreciate it and find the joy in it. 
Um, and then also sort of writing about nature and perhaps climate change and how things are changing and how things ought to be protected um, in modern times or in up-to-date times. Um, and I do think that I'm going to enjoy this one. I do think it's going to be quite similar to Gerald Durrell's book, um, My Family and Other Animals, particularly in the flashback sections when he's talking about his childhood. And that book, Gerald Durrell's book, is my favourite book of all time. Uh, I'm definitely going to do a video about that coming soon. Um, but yes, I'm super excited for this one. I think I'm really going to like this one. And yeah, I'll let you know when I have read it and I'm sure I will make a full video review of it. So in case you're interested, make sure to check that out. So that's it everyone. Thank you so much for watching my first Wild Reads video. I'm so happy to have you here and I hope you enjoyed it too. Um, if you've read any of the books that I mentioned, please do leave a comment down below letting me know what you thought of them. Although if you hated them, probably best not to leave a comment down below just yet because I do like to go into a book without any kind of preconceptions about what it's going to be like. Um, so if you really hated it, have no fear because I will be uploading sort of review videos, roundup videos after I've read them and it's there that you can really let rip uh, and really have a rant and tell me what you thought if you feel the need to. Um, but again, I'm so glad to have you here. I really want to start a little kind of online nature writing, nature reading community here on YouTube and I'm happy that you've decided to become a part of it. Please do subscribe to Quest for Nectar, you can find the link down below. Check out the blog and the Instagram and I'll see you soon. Bye!